17th chapter, verses 1 through 6. But I, my focus is on verse number 5. And it says, And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Amen. How many of you want your faith to be increased on today? Amen. And the topic of our lesson on today is how to grow in faith. Amen. To increase something, you got to know what you're going to increase. Amen. You know, you got to know what to do, what's suspected of you to, to go stronger in the Lord. Amen. On today, amen. And one of the first things we will have to do is to know who we serve. Amen. Amen. At the top portion, it says, it's not a great faith we need, but faith in a great God. Amen. Those are the first two answers. Uh, to the questions that's at the top. It's not a great faith we need, but how many know we have to have faith in a great God? There's a great God that we serve, the God that's truly the head of our life, the one that brought us in today, right now, the God of yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. We got to have faith in him. Amen. And to, to have faith in him, to grow our faith, we got to exercise our faith on today and every day of our life we you know when we exercise when we exercise naturally we see results amen we we find that we can get a little bit stronger day after day we just, but we got to stick with it we just can't exercise one day and think we have it we attained it all that we're the strongest person on the planet no we got to keep doing this day after day we have to live faith to faith we have to grow our faith abundantly amen, amen. So we ought to put our faith into practice daily. We have to daily practice our faith. Amen. We have to daily ask God for more to increase and enlarge our faith, to have us to do what he called us to do and to know what he called us to do. Amen. And when we do that, we see the victories of faith. Amen. There's victories of faith. You will see what God is doing through your faith. When you don't think things are going to be accomplished, but God gives us the victory. How many know God gives us the victory on today? Amen. But we need to have a faith, amen, that possesses us. We have to possess this faith. What are we doing with our faith? We have to let it to take over us, to do its will in us, to speak through us and in us. Amen. There's work that we need to do, but we need that work to be in us to be able to accomplish it. Amen. And for that, we got to also trust him. I mean, no, trust in the Lord is not always going to be comfortable. I found that out. It's not always going to be easy to do. But we have to trust in God. We say we serve a great God. So let's just trust in that great God, the one that brings us out each and every time. Amen. But he that promises faithful. Amen. And we also got to uh, exercise our faith in our giving. As Pastor said, we got to give unto the Lord. Amen. We got to give back because God, we only can give what God gives us in the first place. Amen. Amen. Whatever he gives us, we need to sacrifice. We need to sacrifice to make sure the work of the Lord is done. Amen. There's things he wants us to do, but it, how many know some things cost in this world? Even right now, things cost to do what God called us to do. Amen. We ought to exercise faith in our living and in our action. We have to exercise in everything that we do. Faith with works is a force. Force. How many know faith is a force? When you have faith in God, the devil got to back up. No matter what he brings to you, your faith to tell you, devil, not today. You ain't going to trick me no more. I got this. God is on my side. God, the faith I have in him, he's going to bring me through. Because he did it before. He brought me this far. And I know he's not going to leave me right here. He's going to continue to be by, by my side. Amen. Amen. But faith without works is a false. How I many know you just, you're just tricking yourself? Amen. If you don't have the faith without works, put it in action. Faith is an action where you have to put your faith to work to know God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. That we can ever ask our thing, but there's some work we have to put in. Whoever he has us to do, amen. So our faith to get stronger in him. And we also have to examine our God through the word. 
We have to examine the word of God. Amen. We have to examine, know the word for ourselves. The Bible says, study to show thyself to prove. But how many know you don't know what you don't study? And if you don't study, you soon forget. Amen. It goes in one ear and comes out the other side. Amen. You have to study. When you study, you you learn to obtain, amen, to adhere to the word of God and to know the word of God. Amen. You need to know what the promises God called you to. Amen. Write that on your paper. You have not done so. To claim his promises, you would need to know what they are. Amen. But you also have to read and believe the word of God. You have to believe what God has called you into. When he called you into his marvelous light, you have to believe that. When he called you to be the head and not the tail, you have to believe that. You have to believe whatever he called you to do with confidence and expect the Lord is going to see you through it. No matter what it is, God is going to see you through the promises. Amen. The promises of God. Amen. We also got to have expectations in the Lord. We got to put our expectations. In the Lord, he said, cast all of our cares upon him, for he cares for us. I mean, no, God cares for us. He strengthens us. He heals us. He delivers us. He redeems us. He forgives us daily. God forgives us of everything that we've done, whether we wanted to admit it or not. We got to go to him and ask him to forgive us. He's a forgiving God. Amen. He even said he won't remember them no more if we just give it to him. Amen. But we have to become God-dependent, amen? We have to work on his own time, amen? But our impatience, how many know our impatience fails us? Our impatience trips us up. Our impatience makes us stumble and fall. When God said, hold your head up so you can see the path ahead of you, amen? Our patience robs us of being able to fully see what God is doing in our lives of the way he's calling us into. We have to know the way. Amen. We have to know the way, but we need to look up to see the way. Look your heads up. All ye gates and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Amen. Give it to him. Give God time to walk. Amen. It's not going to be right then and there. Amen. It's already done, but we have to walk in, in his time. Amen. When he called us and to be in our place where we're prepared and ready to go what God has us to do for him. Amen. We just can't think this is going to be done overnight. It's a process. Amen. Faith and living holy is a process. Daily, we have to renew our faith. Amen. We have to renew our faith in him daily. Amen. Four, we have to evaluate God's work behind the scenes. Amen. Are there any questions thus far before I move on? If any questions, raise your hand or uh, you can press star nine if you're on your phone. Amen. If anybody have any questions. Missionary Cheryl Bass. Missionary? I don't have a, I don't have a question, but I've got a comment. It's yes, just ma amazing how that, you know, when we talk about exercising our faith, that we we want to exercise the faith part but we don't want to actually do the exercise that goes along with that you know uh, the lord has really been had really been dealing with me with faith, faith without works is dead and you know he's like you have the faith but if you're not working in that then how do you expect me to work through you and I think that, you know, we always talk about that we all have to exercise our uh, spiritual muscles. So not only just our natural muscles, but our spiritual muscles. But we have to, in that exercise, we, it, exercise takes work. And it takes a certain amount of will and determination to get through things. And so when we begin to exercise, and thank you, uh, Elder Keys, for doing this, when we begin to exercise our faith, we know that we have to have a certain amount of will and perseverance to actually do the work so that that way we can see the victory and so that that way we can truly say that our, that our faith really does possess us. 
and we possess our faith. That's all I had to say. Amen. Praise God. Anyone else? Have any more comments or questions? Yeah, I had. I, I wanted to. Uh, thank you, Sister Bass. That was wonderful. I wanted to go to uh, Romans uh, 1, and I think it is Romans 1 and um, 17. Um, Romans 1 and 17, and you can uh, read, you know, read it in a, a number of different um, versions, but uh, I wanted to kind of go to verse 17 in the Amplified Version, and it says, for in the gospel, for in the gospel, a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith. It's disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith. It's disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith. As it is written, the man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith. So. Uh, when you read that in another translation, which uh, we're probably more familiar with, but it, it says, um, for herein is the righteousness revealed. Let me go to it. It says, um, for I am, uh, I'm not ashamed for, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also to the Greek. Verse 17, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. The gospel of Jesus Christ. So in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. And so we, we, we grow from faith to faith. Uh, you know, we get, he's, you, the Bible just said that God has given to every man the measure of faith. But it ought not stop there. It, you start with a mustard seed, but you ought not stop there. When we consider what God has done, we and, and if we would ascribe the blessings of God to what he's done to us and give him credit for it, that would then increase our faith going forward. If we did it then, he'll do it again. If he did that, he'll surely do this. Amen. And so that's kind of where we're just growing from faith to faith. That means as... Missionary Bass said, you got to exercise your faith. You got to step out. You got to do some things and be patient <laughs> while you're waiting on God to come through for you. Amen. Amen. First lady, you have her hand up. First lady. Yes, you know, I was uh, reading along with, uh, um, with all the keys, and I really like when it says evaluate God working behind the scenes in your life. And that really touched my heart because sometimes we go on and on complaining about different things when it's already done. So it says when you are alert to God's handiwork on your behalf, your faith will increase. It says people tend to be caught up in their problems that they fail to see what the Lord is doing on their on their behalf. So it says, be alert to what the Lord is doing for you. He will use blessings and trials to help you mature and grow in Christ and in faith. So that just really, really touched my heart because I know some of us are going through some things right now. And I know some of us are complaining about a lot of things right now because we have a lot of <laughs> right now to think about things that we're going through and things that are happening that are happening to us right now but it's telling us to be alert to what God is doing in our lives nevertheless on what we're going through we're still breathing hallelujah we're still moving around we're still alive I've heard about a lot of people passing and going but for the people who are the closest to me I haven't heard anything and so I thank God for that so I want to be obedient and I want to be a, alert to what the God is doing for me right now. Amen. That's all I wanted to say. Amen. God bless you for a state. Anyone else? If there be any more hands. If not, amen. We want to move on. I want to go back um, before... Um, Point number four, I'm going to go back to point number three. Missionary Bass said something during um, testimony service, and she said something that was unexpected. Amen. When I was going through this lesson, God 
told me, expect the under, under, under expected, unexpected. They do happen too. How many know the unexpected happen? Amen. There's some things we expect to happen, but then there's some things we under unexpect to happen. This is something, Lord, this happened too? Amen. But if you can, uh, my brother, if you turn to um, put up uh, 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, verses 9 and 10. Amen. 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, verses 9 and 10. Amen. While he's doing that, we have to uh, expect God to do what he says he's going to do. Amen. But we also got to expect that some things is going to happen to us, but also for us. Amen. How many times have people, we went to the mailbox and we got something in the mail we was not expecting to come for us. Amen. But thank God, God knew just what we need of. Amen. When we need it. When that bill needed to be paid, amen, when that, we got that pink notice in the mail, and we asked, Lord, you know what I got, and I ain't got it. Lord, help make up the difference, Jesus. And don't you, lo and behold, didn't he do it? Didn't Lord make up the difference for us? Then the Lord gave us just what we needed when we needed it? Amen. Time and time again. Amen. Do you have it, my brother? First Peter 9, 5, 9, and 10. Amen. If not, I'll just read it. Amen. And it says, Whom we just steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Verse number 10. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Amen. How many times we have said, Lord, why me? Why do I have to go through this, Jesus? I see all the good things happening to my neighbor. But what about me, Lord? Amen. But how many know the Lord knows just what you need and how you need to get it? Amen. That's just something we need to go through. To help in laws and increase our faith in him. Amen. When we call our brothers and our sisters, when we try to talk to them and they can't be found nowhere in that midnight hour, when we had to fall on our knees, fall on our face before God. Amen. And cry out to him. Amen. Say, Lord, help me. Help me. Lord, don't you know the Lord will see you through? God will comfort you. He give you peace. He give you joy. His Bible says he'll strengthen you. He'll shatter you. But not only that, he'll make you perfect. He'll mature you. He mature you. This is some things you go, we ain't going to need to be mature in. This is something we used to do that we didn't act like what we act like now when we went through it. Amen? There's is some ways we ought not to do no more. When God is in our life, when we have the faith in us, we have the Grace in us when we have mercy inside of us, when we thank him and praise him and magnify him. Don't you know those thoughts will go away, those actions and those deeds will go away. But God will help us and give us peace to go through it. Amen. Amen. Four, and as First Lady said, we have to evaluate God's walking behind the scenes. How I many know God is walking behind the scenes? Amen. There's a curtain of our life. That's just some things we won't see, but we'll see the victory. We, we retain the victory. Amen. We won't see the process, but we see the victory. Amen. God is working on our behalf day in and day out because time doesn't mean nothing to God. He's the author of time. Amen. He's not constrained by it. Amen. God bless you. Are there any questions? Amen. If not, Yes. Remember, the host and co-host don't have a hand to raise. Remember, we have to use our natural hands. Okay. Amen. Amen. After me, uh, Sister Bass have her hand up. But I wanted to go back to what Sister Bass said and what you were saying now, expectancy and, and God to work things out. I, like I had testified before that um, 
I've been off work since, since over a year now and, you know, getting workers' comp. And then just a month and a half ago, it went from, you know, a certain amount to a third, not even half. Now I'm getting just a third of that amount. But I got a letter the other day from year, from years ago and saying, if I don't spend use this card that I used, supposedly supposed to have, um, they were going to send that money to unclaimed property. And, and it was like, what? I didn't understand it. But it was like, I have like $3,000, over $3,000 I can get. And I said, praise God. My husband said, you better hurry up and call that number and make sure because we need that money. And man, because so I went just from a month and a half ago, I'm getting just, you know, I'm getting only a third. And it's like, I, we can't survive off of that. But God made it up. He, he looked out for me. And I thank God for that. He looked out for my family. And he's making a way out of no way because we're being faithful. We're being obedient. We're doing what God told us to do. Amen. Continue to pray for us that we continue to do the will of the Lord. This is Missionary Bass. You know, um, uh, Elder Key said something. He, he said that uh, we may not see the process and a lot of times I know for me I can speak for me that I would want to see the instant gratification of what I was asking the Lord for and manifesting I want to see the instant I want to see it now I want to see it right now I want to see it in front of my face like right now but in this process of trusting him and knowing that he's working behind the scenes, you know, he told us in his words that in his word that he said, I have the plans, you know, I know the plans that I've, I, that, that I have for you. And I've, I'm learning that in that plan that plan doesn't call for instant gratification like I want. That plan calls for me to trust that when that plan is executed, that I'm in the right position and I'm in the right place to be able to receive what's going to happen in that plan. And it's just amazing how the Lord works in and also the scripture that, you know, I'm going to get off of that. Also the scripture that he read, First Peter, you know, I'm like, Pastor, I like Amplified. To me, the Amplified version is, is loud. And so, um, but I just want to read the Amplified version because it just jumped out at me. It says, but resist him and be firm in your faith against his attack. Be rooted, established, immovable knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters throughout the world. So we're not alone in this. You do not suffer alone. But after you have suffered for just a little while, the God of all grace, who imparts his blessings and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete confirm, strengthen, and establish you, making you who you ought to be. That's a, that's a promise. That is some kind of promise. And so for me, that instant gratification, I had to put that down because I needed to know that I needed to be immovable in order to see the results of the victory. Amen. Hey man, we have two hands up. We have Sister McKnight and then Sister Boyd. You have to unmute yourself, Sister McKnight. Oh, oh bless the Lord. I didn't have my hand up, but um, anyway, I do. I just thank God for Jesus. I thank God for my Solid Rock family. And um, most definitely waiting on the response is what I've learned, you know, because it might not look look like but i know my request that i've made upon the lord 
that, you know, I'm just waiting on the response. <laughs> That's all I had to do is just hold on. Help is on the way. Amen. Amen. It's on the Amen. way. Thank you. Sister Boyd. Um, go ahead, Sister Boyd. Unmute yourself. Okay. Just a second time I did. But anyway, um, waiting behind the, working behind the scene, the Lord not only works behind the scene for us, but he also works behind the scene for our loved ones. Uh, for instance, the other, because uh, we're always praying that the Lord would protect our loved ones and guide and lead them. So for um, have a t uh, quick testimony, my son was out in Oakland the other night, and he just missed having a, a bad accident. He said he would have been gone. He would have been dead if he had the accident. So I was just praising God for working behind the scenes for that. Amen. 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 Where's God? Any more hands? If not, amen. He's working it out for us, saints. He's working it out. Whether we know it or not, whether we see it or not, God is working it out. But we have to have faith that he is working it out. Amen. And he's doing just what we need him to do. Amen. I mean, no, we just need him to do what he needs to do in us. Amen. And through us. Amen. It says he will use blessings and trials to help you mature and grow in Christ and in your faith. Amen. Well, to those who do not believe, no explanation is necessary, is possible. Amen. When you don't believe, how can you, how can you know it? Amen. How can you believe it? Amen. Doubt. Amen. You can conquer doubt by seeing God's hand, seeing him moving in your life. When you have him down on the inside, he'll let you know that he's there. He'll let you know that he is walking it out while you're yet in the process. He's walking you out where you will and shall receive the victory. Amen. Doubt would say, can God? How many of us said, can God? Amen. I'm not just raising your hand to tell you. Amen. I'm saying, can God? When I was in the hospital, I was saying, can God? Will you, God? Will you save my life? Will you bring me out this hospital bed, out of this intensive care? But God said, my faith said, God will. When I came out of that hospital, all I said was, hallelujah, <laughs> Jesus. Amen. Bless him because he did it. He did it. No one else could have done it but him. Amen. 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 Moving right along. Amen. Uh, Isaiah 43 and 2. Yes. You do have a hand. Deacon Cooker. Amen, Dick. I would okay. want to comment on... Uh, Verse 3 to 5 and 10 in the new uh, Good News Testament, it says, Oh Lord, um, wait a minute. After you have suffered a while, I mean, it's not going to be long. You're not going to keep on suffering. It says, The God of all grace, who calls you to share the eternal glory in union with Christ. I like this part, will himself, will himself perfect you and give you firmness, firmness, strength, and a sure foundation. That means you're not going to be on shaky ground. So I just wanted to comment on that because a lot of times we be going through stuff and we're trying to do things ourselves. And he said he will perfect, perfect us. And nothing we can do is all on him. And he said what he'll do. So we have to just stand firm in, in, in our belief on the Lord. Amen. That's all I want to say. Thank you for that, Dick. Amen. 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 Moving to the last line. Amen. Amen. It says, and write this on your paper, the last line. It says, thinking about what God does for us will cause us to honor him for the benefits he continually provides, amen, thinking what God does for us will cause us to honor him for the benefits he continually provides. I mean, no, God continually 
provides benefits for us. Amen. The final point, we have to endure and embrace our trials. Amen. How many know we have to go through it, but we also have to embrace it? Amen. When we embrace it, we're going to go through that thing. When we know that we have to go through this, we're going to find our way out. Amen. We're not going to give up. Amen. Trials will test your faith. It's made of what you're made of and will either increase your faith or destroy it. It either will increase your faith or destroy it. But looking at it from God's viewpoint, we will have a positive effect on us. When we look at it from what God sees, amen, what God sees in us, amen, it will give us comfort, amen. Faith in God makes great optimists, amen. We know that God is going to work it out. We may not see, we may not know how, but God shall work it out because he promised he would. It also gives us a spirit of anticipation and expectation, anticipation and expectation of what God would do for us. Amen. Amen. But if we desire this faith, we must consent to his testing. How many know we're going to go through a test? The testing of our faith. Amen. That is what's hard for most of us. But how many know God will help us go through it? Amen. When our faith is warmed up, when our faith is exercising, when we exercise our faith, we get warmed up. Amen. We won't be stale. We won't be frozen. Amen. We'll go through it. We'll walk in victory. Amen. We know God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. Amen. Our mind is stayed on him. We embrace what we're going through and we're walking yet with him through it. Amen. Because he's walking with us. Amen. Trials are faith builders. Amen. Trials are our faith builder. Trials are what helps us to stay on the right path. Amen. Of knowing who we need to be in, in to see after, to look at, to seek after God who's the head of our life. life. Amen. God will give us the victory. God will give us strength and power. Amen. To go through it no matter what it is. Amen. Not only that, but faith will purify us. Amen. Purify faith develops patience in all of us. Amen. How many know the Lord will purify us? Not only will he sanctify us, but he'll purify us. Amen. James said that the trying of our faith will be patience. How many know we need patience today? No matter what's going on in the land, going on in the world, what we put on the news is always calamity and horror. But thank God, God gives us patience and he'll see us through it. Amen. Patience is essential. Even all the difficult that we go through. Well, amen. Remember, faith is to believe what you do not see. But the reward of this faith is see what you believe. Amen. Amen. When you don't see it, just trust him. Then you see it. Amen. Just trust him and you'll see it. You see it through your faith, through your lens of faith. You see it clearly, what God is doing in your life. Because he'll speak to you. He'll call you in the midnight hour. He'll tell you everything is all right. He'll strengthen you. He'll shelter you. He'll establish you. Amen. And first Peter said, he'll give us the victory. Amen. God bless you. I thank you. I thank you all for your wonderful comments and questions, helping me out to get through this wonderful, tremendous lesson. We have to remember, we have to grow in this. Grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's grow together in him. Let's do this together because we're more than conquerors. God bless you. Amen. Let's give God some praise on today. Amen. And prepare to give it back in the hands of our leader, our pastor. Amen. On today. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You have to unleash yourself, you. Pastor. Sorry about that. I thought I did. But come on, give God some praise for our facilitator. Amen. Woo! For these last two weeks. Yes. He did a fantastic job. Amen. Yeah. We appreciate him so, so much. Been faithful, faithful down through the years. Uh, are there any questions or comments that can...